Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Scale Modeling with Mike Ashey. Today's tutorial will be on how to paint a Measure 22 U.S. Navy camouflage skein on the 1 to 350 scale USS Missouri. I'm also going to talk about the paints that I used, how I mixed them together, the masking tape I used, and the masking techniques that I used in order to achieve this nice, clean looking paint finish. So, without further ado, let's get started. The first step in painting a U.S. Navy Measure 22 paint scheme is to completely prime the surface. I like to use testers enamels and I did so for this Missouri project. I also like to use a Badger 200 airbrush and my air supply is a CO2 tank. Here the Tamiya USS Missouri hull is ready to be primed. Once the paint on the hull was completely dry, I mounted the model on its wood base so I could prime the main deck and the lower superstructure with an airbrush pressure of 15 PSI. The hull, main deck, and the superstructure are now completely covered with testers primer. Priming the surface provides you with one last chance to check seams and gluing surfaces to be sure that nothing was missed during your final construction checks. Priming the plastic surface also provides an excellent layer for finished paints to adhere to. The Tamiya Missouri kit has very faint lines on the hull for the black bootstripe. For all my masking needs, I like to use 3M Painter's red labeled masking tape. And I always place two layers of the tape, one on top of the other, and I use a straight edge and a sharp number 11 exacto blade to cut the lengths of tape that I need. I always use the upper layer of tape for all my masking needs. Here I am using small sections of tape to set the line for the hull red color. The tape edges are set on the lower hull line which marks the edge of the hull red color. Now I'm using longer strips of masking tape with the edges tightly butted up against the smaller sections of tape. As the tape line moves towards the stern, I use thinner sections so the tape will conform to the hull's curves. As a masking tape line is complete around the perimeter of the hull, I always check to be sure that the tape is straight and the edge is flat against the surface. This masking technique provides for a very straight hull line and all the other additional colors on the hull key off of this line. Now all the exposed areas are completely covered with large sections of masking tape with lots of overlap so that there is no chance that overspray will get into these areas. I like to use flat red with some flat black added so that the resulting color is a dark blood red. The airbrush pressure that I used was set at 15 to 18 psi and two coats were applied. With all the masking tape removed, the hull red color line looks crisp and straight. Now it's time to completely mask the hull red color. Here you can see how I use thin strips of masking tape to follow the red line and small sections to secure the strips of tape to start covering the surface. Even with careful masking, you can sometimes get paint bleeding if the air pressure is too high or the tape pulls up. Here I've used wider lengths of tape along the hull surface as I work towards the bow. With the red line edge carefully masked, it is time to completely cover the red hull color. Here again, liberal amounts of tape were used to completely cover the red color on the lower hull. U.S. Navy Measure 22 calls for a haze gray color at the bow area, and it starts where the deck starts to shear up towards the bow. For my Measure 22 paint schemes, I like to use Tester's Flat Gold Gray to represent the haze gray color. This color was airbrushed onto the forward section of the hull. To get the straight line from the point where the hull starts to shear up towards the bow, set a length of tape across the surface so that the upper edge defines the line for the flat gray color. Then take another section of cut tape and butt it up against the upper edges of the lower tape. 
Once you are satisfied with the upper tape application, remove the lower tape. With the bow area painted a flat gold gray color and mass, it's now time to mix the paint for the navy blue color. To achieve a scale navy blue color, I use Tester's Dark Sea Blue, which is a gloss color, mixed with a small amount of intermediate blue, which is a flat color. The resulting color will be semi-gloss navy blue, and it'll appear a bit dark. I also covered as much of the exposed superstructure with masking tape as possible to minimize overspray. Two coats were airbrushed onto the exposed areas of the hull. Now it's time to airbrush the boot stripe. I carefully measured the width of the boot stripe and then marked this width onto a length of tape. Small sections were then carefully cut out. These sections were butted up against the edge of the masking tape that covers the red color. Lengths of tape were then carefully cut and applied to the hull, butting the lower edge of these lengths up against the upper edges of the small tape sections. With the small sections of tape removed, the exposed hull area is where the flat black bootstripe will be airbrushed with Tester's flat black color. Prior to airbrushing, the edges of the tape were all checked to be sure that they were sitting flat against the hull. Two coats of flat black were applied to the surface, and the airbrush tip was positioned at approximately 90 degrees to the hull surface to prevent the airbrush pressure from lifting up any of the tape edges. And yes, I know, it looks so messy with so much masking tape, but be patient. And ah, with all the tape removed, the colors look very crisp, and the demarcation lines between the colors are sharp and distinct. Now it's time to carefully tape the hull so that the deck blue color and the flat gold gray color can be airbrushed. The entire hull has now been masked, and the flat gold gray color was then airbrushed onto all the exposed surfaces using 12 to 15 psi air pressure. Now comes the tedious part. All the vertical surfaces have to be masked so that the deck blue color can be airbrushed. I use small lengths of tape to cover all the vertical surfaces. For the superstructure, I usually start at the top and work my way down to the lower vertical surfaces. Note how I use various widths and lengths of tape to cover the vertical surfaces. The stern area has all its vertical surfaces covered. Here again, various sizes of masking tape were carefully applied. Now, all the vertical surfaces on the superstructure are masked. Note how the masking tape sections overlap one another. This helps prevent overspray. There are hundreds of small sections of masking tape covering all the vertical surfaces. This masking tape process is tedious, so it's best to take frequent breaks so you won't get frustrated or discouraged. Now that all the vertical surfaces have been covered and carefully checked, it's time to mix the deck blue color. Here again, I use Tester's Dark Sea Blue color, and I mix greater amounts of intermediate blue so that the resulting color is noticeably lighter than the navy blue color. This deck blue color was airbrushed using a 12 psi setting, so the air pressure won't lift any of the masking tape. Here again, two coats were applied. With all the tape removed, the demarcation lines between the colors is very sharp. And yes, the navy blue and deck blue colors have a semi-gloss appearance, and they appear dark. Now comes the fun part. The entire surface gets a coat of Tester's clear dull coat. With the clear dull coat applied, the navy blue and deck blue colors are now flat colors, and they're much lighter in appearance. Let's take a closer look at this magic technique. Here is a stern area, and it's a dark semi-gloss deck blue color. 
lighter than the semi-gloss navy blue color. With the clear dull coat applied, the colors are now flat and lighter in appearance. The navy blue on the vertical surfaces and the deck blue on the horizontal surfaces are also distinct in their appearance to one another. The superstructure area looks pretty darn good. And the bow area also looks very crisp and clean. This is how a U.S. Navy Measure 22 paint scheme is supposed to look when viewing the ship from the side. All the separate superstructure subassemblies were primed, and then they received their base coat of flat gold gray. And then all the vertical surfaces were carefully masked using small sections of masking tape. Note how the masking tape sections overlap one another. There are over two dozen small strips of tape on this part alone. The deck blue color was airbrushed using 12 PSI to help minimize overspray. And the semi-gloss appearance of the deck blue color will soon be fixed. Using low pressure allows you to airbrush into very tight areas and spaces. This part received a coat of Tester's Clear Dull Coat, and now it looks like a deck blue color. Careful masking and low air pressure will always yield good demarcation lines between colors. The windscreens were inked with a black 0.1 millimeter drafting pen. More careful masking was applied to this part to airbrush the top of the smokestack flat black. And... This subassembly is now ready for its photo etch railings. Smaller parts were primed. They received their base coat of flat gold gray. They were carefully masked, airbrushed deck blue, and then given an application of clear flat dull coat. And with the masking tape removed, these parts are ready for final assembly. Here's an example of how small, thin sections of masking tape can be used to wrap around the perimeter of an uneven surface, with larger sections covering the exposed areas. The 16-inch turrets look pretty good. All the small fittings were also primed, airbrushed deck blue, and then airbrushed with clear, flat dull coat. A U.S. Navy Measure 22 paint scheme has all horizontal surfaces a deck blue color. And all the vertical surfaces from the main deck up are a haze gray color. This close-up of the forward area of the Tamiya, Missouri shows how good of a masking technique combined with careful airbrushing and scaled paint colors can achieve great results. This close-up of the aft area of the Missouri shows how sharp the demarcation lines are between the colors. All the secondary guns, the Mark 37 radars, rope reels, and Mark 51 directors are all Black Cat Models 3D printed parts. Hi everybody. I hope you enjoyed this evening's tutorial on how to airbrush a Measure 22 U.S. Navy paint scheme. And I hope you enjoyed the pictures and the close-ups of my completed Tamiya 1 to 350th scale USS Missouri. With that, have a great evening. Happy scale modeling. Don't forget to visit us at www.mikeashy.com. And above all else, please be safe.